this video we shall learn about scent casting which is one of the very important topics of any foundry. Scent Casting Scent casting is a metal casting process characterized by using sand as the mold material. It is relatively cheap and sufficiently refractory even for steel foundry use. A suitable bonding agent is mixed with the sand. The mixture is moistened with water to develop strength and plasticity of the clay and to make the aggregate suitable for molding. Sand castings are produced in specialized factories called foundries. Over 70% of all metal castings are produced via a sand casting process. Basic Steps in Making Sand Castings The basic steps involved in making sand castings are pattern making. Patterns are required to make molds. The mold is made by packing molding sand around the pattern. The mold is usually made in two parts so that the pattern can be withdrawn. The top half of the mold is called the cope, and the bottom half is called the drag. When the pattern's withdrawn from the molding material, the imprint of the pattern provides the cavity when the mold parts are brought together. The mold cavity, together with any internal cores as required, is ultimately filled with molten metal to form the casting. Core making, if the casting is to be hollow, additional patterns, referred to as core boxes, are needed to shape the sand forms, or cores, that are placed in the mold cavity to form the interior surfaces of the casting. Thus the void between the mold and core eventually becomes the casting. Molding. It is the operation necessary to prepare a mold for receiving the molten metal. It consists of ramming sand around the pattern placed in flask, removing the pattern, setting cores in place, and creating the gating feeding system to direct the molten metal into the mold cavity created by the pattern. Melting and Pouring The metal or scrap along with alloying additions is first melted to get the required composition. This molten metal is then poured the molds from transfer ladles cleaning. It includes all the operations required to remove the gates and risers that constitute the gating feeding system and to remove the adhering sand, scale, parting fins, and other foreign material that must be removed before the casting is ready for shipment or other processing. Pattern The pattern is the replica of the object to be made by the casting process. The quality of the casting produced depends upon the material of the pattern, its design, and construction. Functions of the pattern Prepares a mold cavity for the purpose of making a casting. May contain projections known as core prints if the casting requires a core and need to be made hollow. Runner, gates and risers used for feeding molten metal in the mold cavity may form a part of the pattern. Patterns properly made and having finished and smooth surfaces reduce casting defects. A properly constructed pattern minimizes the overall cost of the castings. Pattern Material Patterns may be constructed from a variety of materials. Each material has its own advantages. Limitations. Application. Some materials used for making patterns are Wood Metals and alloys Plastic Plaster of Paris Plastic and rubbers Wax Resins To be suitable for use, the pattern material should be Easily worked, shaped and joined Light in weight. Strong, hard and durable. Resistant to wear and abrasion. Available at low cost. Binders. There are many types of binders to mix with core sand. A binder should be selected on the basis of the characteristics that are most suitable for your particular use. Some binders require no baking becoming firm at room temperature such as rubber cement. 
Portland cement and sodium silicate or water glass. In large foundry operations and in some small foundries, sodium silicate is a popular binder as it can be hardened almost instantly by blowing carbon dioxide gas through the mixture. The sodium silicate CO2 process hardens through the following reaction. Na2C2O5 H2O plus CO2 CO2 plus Na2CO3 H2O The silica gel that is formed binds individual sand grains together. Binders A good binder will have the following properties. Strength Will not distort core during baking. Maintain strength during storage time. Absorb a minimum of moisture when in the mold or in storage. Withstand normal handling. Disperse properly and evenly throughout the sand mix. Should produce a mixture that can be easily formed. The following binders are generally added to foundry sand. Fiery clay. Elite. Bentonite. Sodium montmorillonite. Calcium montmorillonite. Limonite. Kaolinite. Classification of molding processes. Molding processes can be classified in a number of ways. Broadly they are classified either on the basis of the method used or on the basis of the mold material used. Classification based on the mold material used. Sand molding. 1. Green sand mold 2. Dry sand mold 3. Cement bonded sand mold 4. Carbon dioxide mold 5. Shell mold. Plaster molding. Metallic molding. Classification based on the method used. Bench molding. Floor molding. Pit molding. Machine molding. Steps involved in making a sand mold. Initially a suitable size of molding box for creating suitable wall thickness is selected for a two-piece pattern. Sufficient care should also be taken in such that sense that the molding box must adjust mold cavity, riser and the gating system. Next, place the drag portion of the pattern with the parting surface down on the bottom board. The facing sand is then sprinkled carefully all around the pattern so that the pattern does not stick with molding sand during withdrawn of the pattern. The drag is then filled with loose prepared molding sand and ramming of the molding sand is done uniformly in the molding box around the pattern. Fill the molding sand once again and then perform ramming. Repeat the process 3-4 times. The excess amount of sand is then removed using strike-off bar to bring molding sand at the same level of the molding flask height to complete the drag. The drag is then rolled over and the parting sand is sprinkled over on the top of the drag. Now the coat pattern is placed on the drag pattern and alignment is done using dowel pins. Then cope is placed over the rammed drag and the parting sand is sprinkled all around the cope pattern. Sprue and riser pins are placed in vertically position at suitable locations using support of molding sand. It will help to form suitable sized cavities for pouring molten metal etc. Fill the cope with molding sand and ram uniformly. Strike off the excess sand from the top of the cope. Remove sprue and riser pins and create vent holes in the cope with a vent wire. Sprinkle parting sand over the top of the cope surface and roll over the cope on the bottom board. Wrap and remove both the cope and drag patterns and repair the mold suitably if needed. The gate is then cut connecting the lower base of sprue basin with runner and then the mold cavity. Bake the mold in case of a dry sand mold. Set the cores in the mold, if needed and close the mold by inverting cope over drag. 
The cope is then clamped with drag and the mold is ready for pouring. Steps involved in making a sand mold.